Hello, and welcome to another podcast where we'll discuss further issues about empty nose syndrome. And along these lines, what I would like to discuss is the issue of form versus function. Uh, form meaning anatomy, uh, the fact that does someone's anatomy determine precisely that they develop empty nose syndrome? Or is it function? Is there some other issue, some other functional area that's actually determining whether someone has empty nose syndrome or not. So when I first started exploring and, and looking into the issue of empty nose syndrome, I very much fell into the, the form category, the meaning that I felt the anatomy determined if someone had empty nose syndrome. Patients were complaining that they were not breathing well through their nose, they were missing tissue, and these patients certainly appeared to have empty nose syndrome, and therefore it made perfect sense what was going on. And in fact, if you did a cotton test, or if you then implanted these patients where the cotton test showed that they would have benefit, these patients actually did indeed benefit and would feel better. And what we seem to be doing was actually recreating a turbinate, and therefore it made perfect sense. We are recrafting the patient to try to give them a more normal looking form inside their nose and therefore it does appear that the anatomy is what is determining that they have empty nose syndrome. This all sounds good except for two issues that come up. One is that I had a lot of patients contacting me who when they would send me a picture of their CAT scan, they actually appeared to have, oh, really look like adequate tissue inside their nose. How could this person be experiencing empty nose syndrome? They had some type of procedure done, for example, a cautery or laser along the surface of their inferior turbinate to try to shrink it down. Um, and the patient now was complaining of terrible breathing through their nose. They felt better when they had a cold. Um, these are kind of classic things that can come up with, with empty nose syndrome. The patient, uh, when they put material in their nose to limit the airflow, they actually feel like they're breathing better. So this is stuff that didn't make a lot of sense if unless someone had empty nose syndrome, and yet these patients appeared to have adequate tissue. So that didn't make sense with the, the form type uh, origins of empty nose syndrome. And the, the other category that came up is the fact that there are plenty of patients running around that actually are missing a great deal of tissue because of surgery, and yet they do not indeed have empty nose syndrome. A case in point, I saw a patient at one point who came in actually for an ear issue, and when a patient comes in for an initial visit, we do do a general head and neck exam looking in their nose and mouth and ears and examining the neck and so forth. That's a standard in an otolaryngology practice. So I did that for this patient. He was in for an ear issue. I don't recall exactly what it was. Um, but when I examined him and looked in his nose, he, he had a straight septum, um, but he basically was missing his entire inferior turbinates on each side. And so I started to ask him about this. How do you breathe through your nose? Oh, I breathe fine. When did you have surgery in your nose? Oh, 20 years ago, and that surgery seemed to help me. I breathe okay. Um, so the patient was a little irritated by this. He was there for his ear issue, but I went on to actually do a cotton test on him and said, well, I just want to do a test on you. I just want to see how you do with this in terms of breathing. And so I put some moistened cotton in his nose in the area of the head of his inferior turbinates where they would have rested. And indeed, this patient said that he breathed terrible with that in place. That was blocking him up. He felt awful. He wanted that out of his nose, which, of course, I took out and thanked him for letting me test that and explain to him why I was actually checking that. Um, so hopefully it made some sense to him. But this was a clear indication that this is somebody who is missing a lot of tissue and they have an empty nose, but they do not have empty nose syndrome. He did not have uh, evidence of paradoxical obstruction. So this was a very interesting case. And as we know, there is a CPT code, a current procedural terminology code, which is a billing code uh, 
for turbinectomy, for removal of turbinate. Now this is, goes back a long time, this is a very old code, um, and this tends to be a relatively older procedure to actually remove someone's inferior turbinate to try to get them breathing better. But the fact of the matter is that it's actually only a small percentage of patients that when they have their entire turbinate taken out, that they then end up breathing poorly. They develop empty nose syndrome. We don't have an exact number. It's hard to figure this out exactly. But there was a paper from Pasali in the past where they actually randomized patients to have different techniques to uh, reduce their turbinates. And best estimate we have is that perhaps 20% of the patients that had their entire inferior turbinate removed actually went on perhaps to develop paradoxal obstruction. Now this is, is kind of reading between the lines because this study was not looking at empty nose syndrome, but from what the patients had described, that is a possibility, 20%. Um, as I had mentioned, I believe in the earlier podcast, that you can also do studies where if you do a very clean procedure, such as a hernia uh, hernia repair, uh, if you do that very clean procedure, sterile, everything is, is very sterile, um, and you then let the patient heal up and you check their sensation at that surgical site, there is a certain percentage on the order of 20%, again, where they really never regain full sensation at the site of that incision to, to dissect down to reach their hernia sac for repair. Um, so there are a certain number of people who never regain sensation after they have had surgery. So essentially what I was faced with was two groups of patients that didn't make a lot of sense on the, the form side of the equation. Uh, on the one hand, patients missing their entire turbinate, yet they do not have empty nose syndrome. On the other hand, I have patients who are really not missing tissue, uh, perhaps doesn't look like they're missing any at all, and if they're describing symptoms which are quite, quite notable or seeming to be empty nose syndrome. So this didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I couldn't figure this out until I had discovered that aspect of the sensation area. And what I realized is that it's not simply that the patients are having tissue extracted, but the tissue that is extracted contains nerves, sensory nerves, and in some patients, in some small percentage of patients, they go on to not redevelop the proper sensory pathways so that they now can tell that they are breathing appropriately. Now it does seem to be that the more tissue that is extracted, the greater chance perhaps that someone can go on to develop empty nose syndrome, but still a lesser amount of extraction, there is still nerve damaged and the patients can develop empty nose syndrome. So this is how that makes sense. Now, one area that still does not make sense and I've not been able to explain very well is the issue of delayed empty nose syndrome. Someone has tissue extracted, uh, has turbinectomy, and then perhaps seven years later starts to report that they're having an increase in breathing difficulties that appears to be consistent with empty nose syndrome. So that is an area that I have not yet with the model of, of thinking function rather than form, I have not been able to figure out a reason for that and perhaps someone out there will will have a good insight as to how that could actually uh, take place in a very logical manner. But essentially I shifted from being more of a form thought as to empty nose syndrome to being more of a function thought. The function being how is their sensory function working. And then with the idea of creating neoturbinates, how is this neoturbinate actually fitting into this whole equation? Uh, am I not recreating someone's form when I implant someone? Yes, indeed, we are doing that. But what we're not actually doing is we're not giving someone back normal sensation. What we're doing is we're actually creating somewhat of a speed bump 
so that when the air comes into the nose, the air will essentially strike this area and will bounce up towards an area that has still normal sensation. So one of the most common scenarios is a patient, a patient is missing their inferior turbinate and uh, the air when they breathe will kind of rush through that empty site which is numb to the sensory uh, capability of telling that they're actually breathing through their nose. When we put cotton in there or when we put an uh, implant in there, what happens now is as the air comes through the nose, it actually strikes that cotton, bounces up towards the intact middle turbinate, and those sensory nerves are triggered at the middle turbinate, and the patient then can tell that they're breathing. So we try to recreate that with implants on a more permanent basis, and basically we're redirecting the airflow from a numb area to a more sensate area, and this is how we can bring about improvement. I think this also explains why we can never really get somebody feeling 100% because we can't recreate things uh, exactly. We can't get their nerves uh, in the lower aspect of their nose there. We can't get them to function again. Uh, our best we can do is actually to get them to be able to have their middle turbinate uh, functioning uh, to tell the airflow is going past. So this is where I kind of shifted from being more of a form person to being more of a function person. And there's still a lot of people that, that very much uh, want to measure empty nose syndrome in regards to the actual form. They, they don't believe anyone can have empty nose that does not have their entire turbinate missing, and I common, commonly run across patients where their physician will say to them, well, you couldn't have empty nose syndrome because you don't have enough tissue taken out. Well, unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be the case. It's more, are their nerves damaged? Um, empty nose syndrome, in my mind, is a neuropathy. It, uh, it does bear a relationship. The more tissue that's taken out, as I mentioned, the more likelihood you may not regrow those nerves and you can develop empty nose syndrome. But it's not a true linear relationship, I don't believe. So that's the controversy of form versus function in the empty nose uh, arena. And I hope that uh, answers some questions for some people. And thank you very much. Have a good day.